what I did was base it on what I would do as myself. I mean, if I, the possibilities, would I do this? Could I do, I tried every premise on for size. Would I do this? Because it was based on my wife and I. And, and it was a, it was one of the few shows that was not, um, most of the shows, believe it or not, were a battle of sexes. Lucy certainly was a battle of the sexes. Even the Goldbergs, one of the great situation comedies, a lot of deception, a lot of people fooling everybody. The Van Dyke Show was based on my wife and I. We were, were the adversaries. We argued about things, but we were two against the world rather than two against. And certain areas, of course, to get good humor and good uh, conflict, you, you do you know shows against each other, but you always knew these two people would stay together no, more, no matter what. Some of the shows you, in those days, you say, why are they staying together? You know, they hate each other. They go, honeymoons, pow, and a kiss. Well, you were talking about the show of shows, yes. doing satire. This is, wasn't satire. This was people worried about their children, their wives. Uh, uh, I showed how they met and how they married. and Everybody could relate to that? Uh, yeah, I, I did that, the birth of a baby, you know, the getting the wrong baby home from the hospital. All of those things were... Possibly, and, and, and there was a lot of autobiographical stuff in it. I mean, uh, the marriage, while I was in the Army, th there was a, a thing we did on our honeymoon that was based on my honeymoon where I was remanded at the quarters and I sneaked out, except in this one we gave him a lashes, sneaking out like a girl in a USO show. Dick Van Dyke had fake lashes on. I didn't have that, but I, I was brought in by the captain saying, where were you? You know, I said, well, I was walking in a drill field, you know. He didn't believe me, but he knew I was on my honeymoon. And and lines that actually came from life where um, this woman, we re when I was in the Osho, Missouri, that's where I got I had my honeymoon, uh, my wife came to visit me. We rented a little room, and there were admonitions on everything. Do not use more than four pieces of toilet paper. Do not do this. Do not rock after 8 o'clock. Those were things that were acting... And I used that, and uh, Kathleen Freeman played the landlady, and it was a wonderful show, really based on uh, the stupid uh, room we had. Uh, and based on true life. Yes, a few of those. And uh, yeah, the, the, when he proposes marriage to her, that was exactly me, shivering. I remember shivering when I proposed marriage. Did you have any sense that you were making television history with the Dick Van I knew we were doing something very good, and I knew there was a quality to it because I assiduously didn't use any slang of the day. And when writers would come to work for me and I'd read their scripts, they would be full of the slang of the day and I would use them all. And I used to tell them, fellas, don't use slang of the day. Of course, in reruns, five years down the line, we don't want to hear somebody say he took out his gat. You know, I mean, we see that now in the early movies that they call ice for a, you know, I call it a jewel, call it a diamond, and you'll, you won't be dated. I mean, uh, I'm talking about the old movies. So Splitsville and Going Ape and whatever the phrases they... A-OK. -okay. A-OK, -okay, whatever. It, I didn't use any of them, and I knew them. It wasn't like I didn't know the... But it, it dates it, and it also is not... It's, in, it's instead of good language, instead of finding a way to say something, you use the, the words of the day, and everybody's using them. You'll hear it on four shows. And I didn't want to hear it on four shows, four other shows. So I, I, you'll never hear, a, a, you may hear some uh, um, cliche, not cliches, uh, idioms that, I didn't, that got by that I didn't know. I, I don't know of any, though. I listened to them, and I didn't hear any of them. It's only a blessing. The Dick Van Dyke Show was the best six years of my life as far as I had a baby born during that period. Lucas Ryan was now 37. Uh, it made... It made me an, enough money so that I got a chunk of money at one time when it went into syndic when it went in uh, syndication, I guess. Uh, and uh, everything good happened from the Dick Van Dyke show. It was, and I never wanted to do more television. I mean, that was it. When I was asked to do uh, Mad About You, I had been asked to do many television shows as a guest, you know, be somebody's mother, father, uncle. And I said, I'd be, un it'd be unfaithful to the Dick Van Dyke show. That's my situation comedy. That's my imprinture on situation comedy. And when I met Paul Reiser at a party, he said, uh, I'd like you to come on. Med I said, I love you. I love Helen Hunt. I think you guys are wonderful. But I don't, I don't, I, I don't, 
I, I did my situation comedy. He said, we don't want you. We want Alan Brady. I said, oh, what a great idea. When you hear a great idea, it was not Carl Ryan. He wants Alan Brady. So Alan, I, I was wondering what Alan Brady would sound like 30 years later. Still an idiot, you know. Yeah. 